This is the story of a resort that I didn't like very much when I first arrived. But then I discovered that the Alila Diwa has two sides. There's a lot I like here and a few things that I don't, but what's unique about this resort is it could be a great escape for a lot of different kinds of people. Hey there, I'm Don and I'm traveling the globe to find amazing places to stay and sharing what you need to know before you book. The Alila Diwa is about 30 minutes from the Goa International Airport. The big attraction of Goa is its nice beaches and history. As a former Portuguese colony, there's an interesting mix of Indian and Portuguese culture, cuisine, and architecture in this charming corner of India. There's really nowhere else on earth like this. The resort's only 30 minutes from Old Goa, home to these Portuguese-style Catholic cathedrals, and the town of Panji is next door, also with a lot of character. So I've been in India now for a few weeks searching for this amazing country's most unique places to stay, and I have to say that the kinds of welcomes I've received at some other resorts in India have been nothing short of incredible. And so far, the welcome here is not going well, starting with this metal detector and luggage scanner as the resort's version of a welcome. It's a real turnoff. They do give us these necklaces and a welcome drink and also offer us a beer to kick off our stay. Thanks, cheers. My sister's with me, by the way, but as we're sitting down for the check-in process, they put us at this dirty table. Not a good third impression. With that said, the lobby does have some nice design elements. There are 153 rooms here, and I don't usually stay at large hotels, and I almost never stay at chains. This place is owned by the Hyatt, by the way. But I booked this one because I love the Alila in Bali so much, and I'm hoping this place is as good. One of the managers agreed to show us four room types. We're starting in the main section of the hotel with this room, the one I originally booked. This is called a twin bed loft room that we don't love, so the search continues. Our next stop is what they call the family suite that we like better, but it also doesn't feel very special. Now we're in what's called the Alila suite. And it's nice, <laughs> the bathroom is massive, but as I look down and see the pool for the first time, it looks a bit chaotic. So we're worried it may be loud in this room. The search continues. Now we're headed over to another part of the resort that they call the Diwa Club. It's a three to four minute walk from the main part of the resort that even has its own reception area. Again, I never saw this on the website. But anyway, right away, I like the lobby. This feels more like the kind of design hotel that I like. Now for the room reveal. I like this better than the three other rooms. And yes, we have to pay to upgrade, but it's only 40 US dollars and I think worth it. Especially with this much calmer pool that's exclusive to the guests staying in the club wing. Not only are the rooms more stylish in this wing, this part of the resort is built around this nice pool that's pretty calm. The room cost also includes high tea at four o'clock, sundowner drinks and canopies at six, and a lazy breakfast the next day. Basically, you can order brekkie from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and it's included in the room cost. Also, you should know this place is a really good deal. For parts of the year, you can get the most basic room here starting at 120 US dollars. That feels like a pretty good deal to me. Before I show you the rest of the club section, let's walk back to the main section of the hotel. As you can see, kids are welcome here, and I think this is a good resort option for families. The grounds here are pretty extensive. I got lost a couple of times walking around. There are three restaurants in the main section of the resort. This one is called The Edge, that's next to the pool that also doubles as the pool bar. This is the all-day dining venue that specializes in North Indian cuisine, but also has an international menu. And my favorite venue here is called The Spice Studio, that's only open for dinner. 
This is how it looks in early evening before guests arrive. This restaurant specializes in South Indian cuisine, and I think the resort's done a great job with the lighting and furnishings in this restaurant. My biggest frustration with this place is it's only 700 meters from the beach, but you can't see the beach. You can walk or take this free shuttle from the hotel that takes three or four minutes. And now we've made it to the beach. This is not exactly a deserted beach, but the sand is nice and the surf isn't too rough. The website gave me the impression that this resort's closer to the beach than it actually is. So again, this is a big disappointment. You know, I've stayed at other resorts that are close to the beach, and they make up for the fact that they're not right on the beach by having a nice beach club with loungers, umbrellas, and someone serving drinks. And that's not what's happening here. It's a big missed opportunity, I think. A quick word about sustainability. It really bothers me how this resort has plastic bottles at every turn. Single-use plastics are horrible for the environment. Dear Alila, please stop and replace these plastic bottles with something reusable. Okay, rant over. Now we're back at the club pool. And while kids are allowed in the club too, maybe because this pool is only for people staying in the club, it just has a calmer, more relaxing vibe to it, with or without kids. Should, they're putting up the, it's like five o'clock and they're putting up the uh, cushions out on the pool. It's like way too early for that. The resort's spa is between the club wing and the main wing of the hotel. And I do have to say that it is beautifully done, quiet and relaxing with really nice design. This channel exists because too many of my vacations started with, but the pictures look so different. Help me help you by subscribing. Thanks. The resort's fourth restaurant is right next to the club pool. And while the club pool is exclusive to people staying in the club wing, anyone staying at the resort can come to this restaurant that specializes in Mediterranean cuisine. We're feeling lazy, so we decide to stay in the club and have dinner here. Good food, music, and service, not a bad way to end the day. This is usually where I talk about the highs and the lows, but besides the not so special welcome and all the plastic bottles, I don't have any real highs or any real lows. And I guess that's the way I would summarize my stay here. This resort is just fine, but ultimately I think it's pretty forgettable. Don't forget to subscribe because where I'm headed next is pretty wild, Cabo Sarai. Farther down Goa's coast and a totally different world. Thanks for watching and see us in the next video. Uh, the pillows are really nice. Uh, in fact, they're excellent. I'm going to give them a nine and a half for pillows. Good night.